Through smart tariffs such as those offered by Octopus Energy, including Intelligent Octopus Go, Agile or Tracker, make having solar panels pointless? That's the question I'll be trying to answer in today's video. Octopus have done a great job in offering a whole vast array of smart tariffs for different use cases, including Intelligent Octopus Go for those with EVs, Octopus Cozy for those with heat pumps, and Octopus Flux for those with solar and a home battery. How do utilising some of these smart tariffs affect the payback on a solar install and home battery? The difference has surprised me quite a lot, so stay tuned to find out more. Hi everyone, I'm Danny V Solar and on this channel you can follow my journey all things electric vehicles, solar panels, renewables and much more. Please like this video if you find it useful and also consider subscribing to my channel while you're there. This really helps the YouTube algorithm push my videos to a wider audience and in turn help more people. I want to say a quick thank you at this point to Simon Coupland. He sent me a comment on my one year solar review video which you can check out on my channel. And it got me thinking about how I measure the monthly and annual savings on my system and how much difference a smart tariff would actually make. He also sent me a modified version of my own payback spreadsheet as well with the additional tariffs on there. So thanks very much for that, Simon. Simon wrote, my model shows a similar annual savings to yours against a standard tariff of approximately £1,200, but that drops to 550 if I were on the agile tariff and the tracker tariff is somewhere in the middle. So those of you that have been subscribed to my channel for a while probably know that on the monthly stats videos I compare my savings against if I was on the standard flexible tariff which as of January 2024 costs 28.62 pence per kilowatt hour for electricity all day long which actually makes my solar savings look really good and the reason I did this initially was because this is the tariff I would have been on if I didn't have solar panels However, this would have changed as of June 2023 when I purchased my electric vehicle. At the time, I was making good use of Octopus's Flux Tariff, which is designed for solar panel and home battery users. But if I didn't have solar, I would have no doubt switched to the Intelligent Octopus Tariff to make use of the cheap overnight rate to power my electric vehicle. Simon's message got me thinking about what effect smart tariffs would have on the solar payback if we took that into consideration and also what effect would it have on the overall return of my system. Now, I don't plan on going into too much detail for every tariff that I go through. I've got plenty of individual videos that talk through more about the individual tariffs themselves, so check those out if you're interested, but it's not an easy task trying to calculate the difference that smart tariffs would have on your bills, because often you would use these tariffs in very different ways depending on which tariff you run and when the cheap windows were offered if you really wanted to maximise the savings. For example, if you were on Octopus Agile, you would load up as much of your usage as possible to the cheaper times when the wind is blowing and energy on this tariff is cheap and use less electricity when the rates were higher. If you have an EV, Intelligent Octopus Go probably makes the most sense as you would get six hours of cheap electricity overnight. And if you wanted to maximise your savings, you could also move as much of your home usage to this time period as well and you'd be paying seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour for as much of that usage as possible. So for these calculations I've included the tariffs that you would be eligible for if one you had a smart meter and two you did not have solar panels and a home battery installed. So that means comparing the standard flexible tariff against Octopus Tracker, Intelligent Octopus Go, Octopus Go and Octopus Agile. As I mentioned in many of my videos, Octopus have done a great job with these innovative tariffs. And if you would like to sign up to Octopus Energy yourself, it would be amazing if you could use my referral code that's on screen now, if you find any of my videos useful. If you sign up to Octopus using this code, when you join, you'll get £50 added to your account to help you with your energy bills. And I also get £50 as well. Thank you to everyone that's used that so far. Let's dig into the figures. Now these calculations are a current best guess based on my figures from the last 12 months and there's quite a few assumptions that go along with this data which I'll discuss further on in the video. This isn't designed to be an exact science and just gives a guide as to the savings you could see if you're using different smart tariffs. Let's start by looking at what I said my savings would be versus the Octopus flexible tariff. So during 2023 through having my solar panels and my home battery, I actually made £341.77 profit, mostly due to paying very, very little on my electricity bill when the sun was shining, and also through a really good amount of export utilising Octopus Flux 
and then later on Intelligent Octopus Go. I had my EV for six to seven months of the year, so the amount I'd earned would have been less than this figure if I'd had the EV all year round. So I've tried to separate the amount of electricity I used for both my home consumption and then to power my EV as well. And comparing this to the flexible tariff is relatively easy. During 2023, the price of energy fluctuated from around about 27 pence up to 33 pence. So I've decided to base this on the current price as of January 2024, which is 28 pence. And if we break that down, we get a cost of £615 for my home consumption and then £580 for my EV consumption. And if we work out the difference to the savings I made, remember that £300, that equates to a difference or a saving of 1538 versus a flexible tariff and gives a payback time of around about seven years, which I've discussed in some of my other videos. So that looks pretty good and also ties in with what I've said in my other videos as well. But what happens if we compare that against some smart tariffs? Let's first take a look at the Octopus Tracker tariff. So for this one, you don't need to have an EV, solar or anything else to sign up to this tariff. So essentially anyone can move to it and hopefully save some money on electricity. And this is where the calculations start to get more tricky. The Octopus Tracker tariff tracks the wholesale rate of electricity on a daily basis, which is great when it's cheap, but it can go up to a scarily high one pound per kilowatt hour. Again, on this tariff, you would probably tailor your energy usage to certain days as much as possible to make the most of the cheaper electricity costs. But for the purposes of this experiment, let's assume we use the average across the year. And if we look at the average cost of the tracker tariff throughout 2023, that equates to around 19 pence per kilowatt hour. So quite a good bit below the cost of the flexible tariff at 28 pence currently that the vast majority of people are currently on. And this has quite a big effect on the savings for my usage and although still high, only saves me £1,100 compared with the £1,500 and also pushes that payback out for my solar panels and home battery to 9.67 years. Next, let's take a look at the Octopus Go and Intelligent Octopus Go tariffs. For these tariffs, you need to drive an electric vehicle. So these are two very similar tariffs in a lot of ways in that they offer a cheap rate window of electricity overnight for a set period of time. For Octopus Go, that is four hours of off-peak electricity between 12.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. at nine pence per kilowatt hour. And for Intelligent Octopus Go, 11.30 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. at seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour, as well as a potential additional off-peak hours based on how green the grid is at any one time for Intelligent Octopus Go. So for the purposes of this calculation, I've used the same calculation across both tariffs but I've assumed a downside case, a base case and an upside case, dependent on how much energy you think you could potentially utilize across a cheaper off-peak rate. And this is where the difference gets quite surprising. So in the downside case, I've assumed that for home consumption, 25% of the consumption is at the cheaper overnight rate and 75% is peak rate. For the EV consumption in all of these cases, I've assumed that 90% comes at the cheaper rate to charge your car as the vast majority of the time you'll be charging the EV overnight on the off-peak rate. Let me know in the comments which use case matches yours if you don't have solar or a battery and are making use of these tariffs. I'd be really interested to know how much you can utilize of your home consumption overnight and how it compares with these figures. For my base case calculations I've assumed that the home consumption is 50-50 off-peak and peak and for the upside I've assumed 75% off-peak and 25% peak usage. So what effect does that have on the figures? Well, as you can see, Go has quite a big effect and this is even more prevalent on Intelligent Octopus Go. And for the upside case, if you could utilize 75% of your home energy and 90% of your EV usage on this tariff, the savings are nearly half of what it compares to versus the flexible tariff. And the same applies to the payback as well, pushing it out as far as 13 years. So, 13 years to pay back a solar install. Would that have changed my thinking? And does it verge on making solar installs pointless? Well, as with many of these answers, it depends. These figures are based solely on my usage and may differ vastly on your own personal usage. So it's very important that you do your own sums for your own usage to work out what you would save and how long it would take to pay back if this is important to you. As Simon said in his message, not one tariff is suitable for everyone. It is though certainly another factor to consider when you're looking to get solo installed. 
But overall, personally, I don't think it makes installing solar pointless. I think it's just something else to think about that you need to factor into your calculations. And I'll explain why in a moment. But one thing's for certain, it doesn't feel right comparing my monthly stats to the flexible tariff anymore when I would have been on Intelligent Octopus Go if I didn't have solar and a home battery. So I'll certainly be incorporating that into my thinking for my 2024 monthly reviews, so stay tuned for those. As well as that, the energy market is changing so quickly at the moment, who knows what tariffs could exist in 12 months. And this is proven as when I first had my system installed, just over 12 months ago, the Octopus Flux tariff that I utilised much of throughout last year didn't actually exist at all. So certainly something else to bear in mind if you are considering a solar install with a home battery. Also, if you watch my one year review of my solar install, the benefits of having solar are not just financial. It definitely gives the flexibility to the homeowner that a tariff on its own could not provide. You get to use the energy that you generate how you want to use it. You get to take advantage of the export piece, how you want to use it. And also you can be involved in the saving sessions and make some money there as well, if that's useful. You're also less tied to uncertainties going on around the world. At any point in time, it feels like we're just around the corner from another economic crisis at the moment. And that was proven with the energy prices over the last few years. So you certainly sheltered somewhat from that, not completely, but certainly somewhat by having a solar install and a home battery. I'm also doing my bit personally to help the grid and the planet generating cheap and clean electricity. And that's a good feeling. Reducing the need for fossil fuels and helping to transition to a cleaner energy system worldwide. And also for much of the summer, if I wanted to, I could use the excess energy that I generate to charge my electric vehicle. So that gives me emission free driving powered by the sun. What could be better? And if you're anything like me, installing solar brings with it a whole new world of tech. Anyway, I thought it was worth doing a comparison based on Simon's comment. And after looking at this in more detail, I'll certainly incorporate some of the thinking into my payback figures for 2024. As I always say in all my videos, I want to give real world experience of having a solar install and hopefully help you make a decision if it's right for you. I'll always try to give honest feedback and take into account all the factors that go along with a solar install. Hopefully that helps and you found this video useful. Please hit the like button if so and also consider subscribing to my channel while you're there. It's totally free to do and YouTube will let you know when I release new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.